before Allah To whom faces bow in servility So finishing Hajj And then something happens For example, anyone can make a mistake One brother says something to you or uh, Locks you by accident in the crowd Exactly, Locks either by you. accident or willingly Whatever he does Then what reaction do you show? If you are patient with him, forgive him Khalas, you know if, in case, just say, if you are not patient, and you show a reaction, what is going to happen? All this hash that you did, where did it go? So what, 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 what do we really learn? You know, what we learn actually coming here to hajj? Uh, one, physical struggle, yeah. financial struggle, yeah. uh, coming in meeting with 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 a variety of people from everywhere so it's it's uh, you have exposure to to all these different races so you learn patience equality quality yes equality equality so equality yes 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 absolutely what else learn uh, you feel that every act you do is a form of worship Every act you do, absolutely. Because Hajj, you're walking, you're sleeping, everything you do in Hajj are forms of worship. A worship. And in everyday life, that's how we should live. Everything you do should be a form of worship. So you, should, you should try to bring back this feeling from Hajj and implement it in your everyday life. Absolutely. So you, eat, you eat with intention to strengthen yourself so you can worship Allah. You feed your kids' intention of Sadaqah, you get rewarded for it. Everything you do is a form of worship. Absolutely. And then you can't pray all day. You've got work, you've got a job, you've got other things to do. Yeah. But you can be in a form of worship all day through this this way, this avenue. And it's every like you chance. said, every act you do is a worship. Yes. It's a great chance from the Sahaba for his name said. Very I consider my sleep I as an act of worship, like I consider prayer. He counts Allah's gonna give him reward for sleep. Because he has what intention he sleeps to give you to worship Allah, make himself stronger to worship mm -hmm. Allah, help mm -hmm. him worship Allah. Because his body has a right on, on has a right to give your body what it needs. Exactly. Lots of different reasons. It's an act of worship, even sleep. Yeah, true, true. Many people don't know that, don't recognize that. Think you sleep just to sleep, you eat just to eat. They don't consider that as act of, acts yeah, of worship. Yeah, exactly. Everything we do, if you follow the way of Sunnah. For example, Indicates even going to the bathroom, for example, yes. or uh, stepping out of the house. Yes. You know all the doors which is recommended yes. by the Prophet sallallahu If you follow that, everything is a worship. You start waking up uh, with worship. Anyone finishing your uh, day or going back to sleep with worship by making dua. So that's the self is actually all of it is a worship. Something you notice in Mecca, Hajj especially. You see the meaning of generosity. Correct. People give. So Hajj is a big learning yes, lesson. Very big. Like when they see that in everyday life you don't see much people, especially in Australia and the West, you don't see people giving charity. Yes. Giving. In Mecca, it's, you see it. little kids have a back, like big bottle, big, like a container of waters. You give out waters to everyone. People just give. Exactly. Makes you feel it's a, it's not a connection. Makes you think that you should do the same <coughs> when you have ability to give. And and and, and uh, yeah, I remember actually when we were going for uh, tawaf, it was Zohar time. Yes. And some of these uh, guys, you know, they are standing in this hot sun outside and distributing water. You know, imagine they are also actually under the same sun which you are. Yes. But they want to help you and don't care about themselves. You know. That's right. This is uh, this is a generosity. Yes, it is absolutely. Which is part of Islam. This is part of Islam. And Muslims generally are generous people, all Muslims. Yes, that's correct. But you have to just try to increase that during this time. Yes, correct. Right. Especially when there's a need. The more people need, the more reward there is in giving. Correct. Like under correct. the hot sun, giving water is greater than giving it when you're in a building, for example, shaded. Absolutely. Even so, generosity, we say that starting from the smallest, what you can do, 
even for example we have uh, some you know some families where they live in overseas and their condition is actually quite better than than some of their relatives you know yes. who live in a terrible country yes. so at least imagine if each person takes a responsibility to sponsor one of their own families at least this is a great act yes. of actually generosity yes. and of help mentioned that giving charity to a family member to a non-family member is giving charity one thing give charity to a family member is two things charity and a form of silat rahim which is connecting the ties of kinship so you get double reward for giving charity to a f someone who's close to you you get extra reward absolutely absolutely Sorry. tell more about charities viewers what they can do what they can do to help let's say uh, charity is in Islam it's a very like, a wide concept you can give charity money you can help someone even smiling is a form of charity, charity. as Prophet Allah said mentioned the smiling in your brother's face is a form of charity. charity. And uh, if, you, if you don't have much, some people say, I'm poor, what am I going to give? One dollar, two dollars? What's that going to do? Either give a thousand dollars or give nothing. Some people are like this. Yeah. It's incorrect. You give one dollar and your reward is in that one dollar. Correct. Correct. Uh, Inshallah. <coughs> Inshallah, this. Uh, People, inshallah, will try to come back from Hajj and see these forms of charity and try to implement it in their everyday life. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. It's very important to implement. We know a lot of things, but we don't implement enough. Yes, correct. If we implement what we know, it would be excellent. We implement a lot of good. A lot of good happen. Exactly. Paul also, yeah. also said, in every way, uh, like a liver is a charity. So even an animal, if you give half an animal, you give it food, that's a form of charity. Everything, even to a non-Muslim, mm -hmm. it's a form of charity. Non-Muslim, it could even be a form of charity and a form of da'wah. Yeah. At the same time. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Especially yeah, yeah, you are right, absolutely. Charity doesn't necessarily mean to, the, to do it to other Muslims, yes. you know. Spe do it to non-Muslim as well, because there is a form of da'wah. Da yes. Especially that in the West, a lot of people don't understand the concept of giving. It's not common. Yeah, yeah. Non-Muslims. Yeah, true. Show that, show them that Islam is Muslims are generous people, and the aspect and the understanding of charity could affect them a lot. Correct. Many stories like that. I'm sure you and especially in Western countries, yes. there are some uh, uh, men who sleep on the streets. There are yes. uh, homeless people. So at least, um, if there are some Muslim organizations, you know, in every country we have charity organizations. Uh, you know, actually created by the young. Muslim brothers, yes. they can actually can take advantage of this and, and can be a source of dawah for them. Very good source of dawah. You know, go there and help them. Just yeah. give them at the least like a meal. Yes. You know, whenever you can, just give them a meal, blanket or whatever, just to support them. You know, it's a source of dawah. That's true. That's fine. Well, we also try to do this, you know, whatever we can. Imagine if each person, each Muslim person, just for the sake of Allah, did like a very small act as an act of charity. Just like a chain reaction, you know, for example, I come help someone and someone sees that and says that, okay, I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to do and do act of charity. And it spreads around. Yes. Imagine if each person was doing this. You know, how much, how much it will beneficial it will be First of all, we could help people at the level which can start smaller level to a bigger level. Yes. If someone can do much more, do it. You know, for example, even for example, uh, couples want to get married and they don't have money. Yes. And his other brother is rich and he can afford it. Help him. Yes. It in itself is actually because the brother wants to get married. It's a big help for him. You know, if someone we. All of us Muslims, we did something. For example, smallest level, we are giving a, a piece of bread to someone who is hungry on the street, a child or someone needs it. And someone else doing something else. And everyone doing something for someone. Imagine how great it would have been. And the reward is not minimized because you are poor. Prophet said, 
1 دينار دينار از جولد كوين بيت 1000 دينار I asked, how is that? He said, someone had two dinars. So he gave one charity, <coughs> kept one. So he gave in charity half his money, half his wealth. SubhanAllah. So he's rewarded for that level. Yes. Someone else had a lot of money. Yeah. So he gave from his money a thousand dinars. Didn't hurt him. Yes. He's the one who gave one dinar gave more than the one who gave a thousand. Because yes. it's half his money. Correct. So because you're poor, you have yeah. much money, you have five, ten dollars, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. In this life and even more so in the Akhirah. Exactly. The Hadith of the Prophet uh, said, if I'm not mistaken, um, very Allah grows one's charity. Like one of you grow, I forgot the wording, was it? Grows a date palm, date field, something like that. Mm -hmm. So in the Akhirah, you come, you give a small charity. It is very big. But Allah makes it increase. Increases more and more and more. Return is huge. Yes, subhanAllah. What's very easy to get, like, you know, subhanAllah, behind the subhanAllah, all these <coughs> simple actions get you huge rewards in the hereafter. Yes. And also they bring you good in this world. They bring you satisfaction. True. Bring True. happiness. Absolutely. SubhanAllah, like a... Uh, look at SubhanAllah, things like the suicide rates in Muslim countries and Muslims. Yes. Religious Muslims, I don't think I've ever heard of a religious Muslim committing suicide. Yeah, absolutely. Because they're happy. They're happy with their life. They are content. A lot of non-Muslims, they miss the, something in life which is the uh, spiritual aspect of life is missing. Correct. Especially in the West. Correct. It's very important. You it doesn't matter how much money they have. Yes. You know, you see uh, like nearly every month or so, one celebrity, a celebrity commits suicide or he takes uh, drugs and, and overdose, he's dead, you know. It happens quite a lot. Like the, the body needs uh, food and sustenance to sustain it physically. It also needs uh, sustenance for its soul. The soul can starve and die as well. It's like the body can stop and die. In the West, we don't have that this understanding at all. It's gone. Correct. So if people, a lot of people embrace Islam, it'll solve a lot of their problems, even maybe psychological problems, other problems. True, true. May Allah help us. And it's uh, uh, again, you know, it's your heart, how close it is to Allah, you know. A lot of people, they are in search of happiness and they cannot find it. They are lost because they don't have that connection with Allah. All they need to do is actually recognize Allah and Allah, you know, will grant him that happiness that they are looking for. True, May Allah help us all. Um, um, we wrap it up. What do you say? Um, up to you. <laughs> Where are we now? What's next? Where is Dr. Ryan? We wanted to actually sit with him and learn something from him. Inshallah, he'll come. He'll come, inshallah. Inshallah. He'll be somewhere over there. <laughs> so, uh, Thirsty for knowledge. Inshallah, you're going to go back to uh, Riyadh when you finish, inshallah? Yes, I'll be going back to Riyadh and then, inshallah, on Sunday, going back to work. Yes, sir. Straight to work. Straight to work, yeah. Um, how long have you been in Riyadh, yeah? It's been a while. It's been nearly years? more than eight years. Eight years? Yes. Same as us? Yes, nearly same. You came in which year? Uh, I don't recall. Maybe 2006, 2007, something like 2007, We've been right? almost nine years. Yeah. A bit short of last year. Maybe like a yeah, exactly. few months less than nine yeah, years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, same. Yeah, the same, I think. Yeah. What's the weirdest? You're from Melbourne, yeah? Yes, I am. Yeah. We never met you there? No. Allah brought us to Riyadh, we never met there, at the same time, <laughs> and then we had to happen to meet And here. how many years we've been here? <coughs> Nine years. Nine years and, and uh, we never met, yes, no? SubhanAllah. And we met in the house of Allah. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Uh, what Allah plans for you is best. Yeah, exactly. You understand how it works, but it comes out good always in the end. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. When did you migrate to Australia? In 1991. 1991. Before I was born. How old are you now? I'm uh, 23 or 20, 24. Well, I was born in really 1993. 93. Yeah. yeah, we came in 1991. When we came to Australia, 
we came as a, like our whole family. Uh, my parents, brothers, my uncles, aunties, cousins, all of us, we came in, in within the same one year to Australia. Because of the war? Or because, of, yeah, we, we got out of Afghanistan in a time where there was, you know, the, the Russian and, and, and uh, communism. the communism war, it was there. Yes. When we got out, and then later on, it was internal conflicts. Yes, civil war. Civil war. Yeah. So we got out of there, we came to uh, Pakistan. Yes. In Pakistan, we lived for nearly one year and a half, two years. We were there. And then, because my uncle was already living in, in Australia, so there was like a special uh, humanitarian program for the Afghans, uh, you know, who were living in Pakistan, to come to Australia. So we, then we all went to Australia, all of us. Uh, How many brothers and sisters you have? Uh, your family is still in Australia or going back to Afghanistan? Yeah. No, my family is all still in Australia. I have uh, five brothers. We are five brothers. Yes. Four brothers I have, so we are five, okay. uh, five brothers and one sister I have. Alhamdulillah. All of them, alhamdulillah, they, we all did our um, secondary and tertiary education in Australia. Alhamdulillah. Uh, all my brothers are engineers, except one brother is a business, uh, he's in business management. He works for Australian Taxation Office. And my sister is same. She also has a degree in business administration. Um, she she uh, she was also working previously in in, in uh, Australian taxation office as well. Now she's not working anymore. But Alhamdulillah, um, when we were there in Australia, we felt like a second home because all of our relatives were there. You know, yes. my family, everyone. We used to visit each other and things. So it, it felt just felt like. Uh, so even like just before going to Pakistan, because we were all spread, my whole family from Afghanistan, yes. some went to Germany, some went to US, you know. So and only my one uncle was in, in Australia and my other uncle um, with aunties, they, they were living in, in Pakistan. So we were all of us like, you know, Separate. everywhere uh, spread apart. Yeah. Then when we m met with our uh, uncle in Pakistan, and we came together to Australia, so it's like Australia was a point of, again, it like all together. of us joined together, you know. So it was like a second home, even though yes. in, in Afghanistan itself we were so far away from them, you know. So we felt like coming back home. So Alhamdulillah, life for life for life was, uh, it was good, you know, we as a children, it's ch but very challenging, very challenging, you Why? know, especially... When you are young, say you come from a completely different environment and you come to a free environment where um, all the, all the uh, what do you call the, uh, for example, things that may Allah protect us from is just there, you know. Yes, uh, is, is, all, is, the is, all, all the harams are there, you know. But then one thing about being as a family, it prevents yes, you from a lot yes. of bad deeds, you know? Because, because it's you... Uh, it's, not, it's not correct for the family. The family holds you back, it's true. The family holds you back, you know? Yes. Even you are a uh, Muslim, you always have that in your heart, in your mind, that yes, I am Muslim, I should not be doing a lot of things. But then shaitan is always there. Yes. But at the same time, your family influence is also with yes. you, you know? Sure. For example, me, myself, when I went to Australia, I was 15, 16 years old. So that's like a teenage, you know, where uh, uh, you want to, for example, uh, explore different things and, and you're into different things. You want to, you're young, energetic, you know, yeah. and, and uh, but alhamdulillah, there's a lot of harams that Allah protected us, you know, that uh, we never went close to, for example, uh, alcohol. Uh, uh, never went close to a lot of harams, you know, that uh, yes. that we knew that, okay, it's, it's uh, har haram and we need to protect. But at the same time, we had this concern. My father, for example, or, or, or my mother, is someone always there teaching us about good deeds, you know. Yes. How I can go and some do something bad, on, uh, you know, on their back, you know. Still, Allah, Allah forgive us. There's things that we've done, you know. For example, 
it's not good really to mention yes, some of the yes, things so forget yes. about those things but alhamdulillah and, and the other most important factor is actually having good friends yes, company yes. you're with you know sure. um, so we always had these friends in in our parents were always uh, because when uh, now as a father i know what it's like to be living in overseas in a, in a in a muslim country as my children are growing you know when yes. when 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 we are in australia yes. But now, alhamdulillah, we are in Saudi, so it's a completely different scenario. For your child, you go to such a deep level that even the friends that they have, you have to know who they are, yes. who he spends time with, and you want to know everything about his friends. Yes. And sometimes even you try to choose friends for them. And if you don't like friends, you know, that you think that might be taking your child in a direction in a haram direction and you don't want it, uh, don't want them to go that way straight away start pro, you know preventing it our parents were the same way yeah, but you why you think why they do this when you're young you don't understand you why they don't do understand this that why they do this but but we would sometimes we would know that okay for example when you did something bad behind your back you always feel guilty the guilt was always there imagine you know you have so much guilt even just thinking about your parents but then if you think the other way around that Allah is always watching you yes. you know then that guilt even gets yes. bigger you know so that you are a Muslim you're not supposed to do these things you know so Alhamdulillah that family which we had that actually prevented us from from doing a lot of harams uh, that's one reason why in the West even uh, among non Muslims it's very common for people to do immoral things because there's no family. Yes. Uh, even for non-Muslims, family usually stops them doing certain things. Exactly. So saying it's that the family has been broken up. You know, Shadi, That's the 18, problem. Years, 18 years old, you can kick out of the house. Yes. Do whatever you want. Yeah. I don't want to see you anymore. Exactly. That encourages the, the, the person to do whatever he wants. Yes. There's no limit. Nothing exactly. stopping him. No one to stop him. Yes. Yes, exactly. So it's really important that Islam actually takes care of the family and subhanAllah Islam encourages us to keep family ties, keep kinship ties There's a lot of good in that From that, from the good that comes out of keeping the family ties uh, is this aspect Exactly It stops you from doing bad Absolutely And, and for me, my best, uh, my best friends has always been my cousins mm. You know, and back, they are coming exactly with the same family values and same uh, sort of like uh, restrictions and things yes. you know from the family that uh, so we are all like common yes. you know and and, and and we've been actually as a circle uh, like in the, in this uh, friendship circle with them yes. so alhamdulillah alhamdulillah Allah's mercy you know uh, we, we we were kept away from a lot of things that actually we could have actually explored and done alhamdulillah um, did you find when you first came that being Afghani, yes. Looking Afghani, yes. Uh, the language kept you away from the society, separate. It's <laughs> a very good question. Like me, when I first came, like me, you think it's being me. a European background. Yes. And my relatives, my cousins, and people. Yes. We can become part of the society yes. easily because yes. you look similar. Yes. But you don't. You have that thing that separates you. Yes. Exactly. W w that's what I noticed uh, when first time I came to Australia uh, and and went to school. Yes, I noticed something in school. I noticed this. You know, you call it wogs. You, go, yeah, you yeah, call yeah. it skips. You know, yeah. uh, Australians yeah. and, and and then you Forms. have the Chinese. You know, yeah. it's like all of them Switch. like in groups. Switch. You know, and I never f like experienced this before. You know, I never uh, been in a situation where oh, you have to be in a specific group yeah. to fit in. You know, yeah. when I came in and and, and I saw that, it, it sort of like hits you as yeah. even as a very young age. It makes you think that okay, where do I fit in? Am I worth this group, that group, or this group? And then you start asking question why it's like this why humans are in a way that okay I always have to make difference for example if my color is different yes. or I come from different background then I am being isolated in a corner 
and then or I have to go and join a group where everyone then looks like me, you know? Why we human are like this? It's something that I, I noticed. That, that's the first thing which I noticed. And second thing, when I started going to school, it was all about popularity. For example, in school you have a, a popular guy who is uh, like, for example, uh, good looking or a guy who is uh, very outgoing, you know, he always good in jokes and stuff, you know, and, and that sort of behavior is like encouraged. Or other challenge was actually girlfriend and boyfriends. I came from a Muslim uh, family. And when I go to school, I see, like, for example, uh, girls and boys in school holding hands and, 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 and even kissing in school, you know, outside class and things really? like that. Uh, <coughs> like, Afghanistan is a very Islamic closed environment. It's not acceptable. It's a very at closed all. environment. It's not acceptable at all. So it's, it's a something that you come and see. Yes. But then the problem is because it's, it's something like, you know, we, we live in a time frame where uh, halals are made haram. Yes. And harams are made halal. Yes. Everyone is so much doing this. Like, for example, if you're not doing it, what's then you're considered, oh, what's wrong with you? Yes. Or you're someone, oh, no one likes you, you know? And yes. that's why and you don't fit in those groups as well. And then no one accepts you in those groups. So, so the first thing you say, oh, he has a girlfriend, he has a girlfriend, he has a girlfriend. I need to have a girlfriend to fit in, you know? a lot of those sort of things that comes in there and this is something that actually this environment takes someone from a situation you know where he shouldn't be involved in a clean situation and, and puts him in this uh, yes. deep yes. hole of, of, of uh, what do you call all uh, haram unacceptable haram things, unacceptable things. Yeah. Um, back to the question is it, so being Afghani did it stop you becoming Australian? Being Afghani, did it stop me become Australian? No, it never stopped me become Australian. Like I never felt like, for example, if you think about, uh, mashallah, in those countries, you know, every person has their own rights. Every person is given equal rights, okay? I never felt like, for example, I was Afghani, and if I went to, uh, uh, Walaikum Salaam, if I went to, like, for example, if I had a situation, yes. say, for example, with a, a white person, yes. you know, that he will be given more rights than I've been given, yes. even though I'm like a second, not second, I'm like a, you know, not not born in yes. Australia, and later on, or later on, I became a citizen in Australia. You know, I never felt that way. But what I felt like in my heart itself, still, I didn't fit in. A lot of cultures and things that you don't fit in. For example, because at the end of the day, it's a non-Muslim country. Yes. If you have a group of friends, say, for example, a group of friends, they say, let's have a party. We have a party tonight. You are invited to come in. Yes. Okay? When you go to that party, what do you see? Mixing, alcohol, everything haram. Everything haram, right? Yes. So what does that tell you itself? That you cannot go to the party. You cannot fit in, right? Yes. You cannot fit in this, in this yes. group. And you, even if you are there, I mean, I've been there, okay? I've been to where I've been invited by friends. Uh, uh, like, for example, the university friends and this. Yes. Uh, uh, oh, you're invited to a party. You know, you don't think of it. You say, okay, he's a friend, I'm going to a party. When you go there and when you see things, straight away, you, 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 you f I naturally felt the guilt of not fitting in, in here. You know, I felt like why I'm here. And then you, when you watch around and you're there for a few minutes and you just get out, you know, because you don't want to be there. But I'm talking about this at the age where you, when you're young, you know, at that time you don't think, for example, when you're going to nightclubs and things, you know, at that age you want to be in this sort of environment, you know, even though you're Muslim or whatever, you want to be, you know, encouraging to go there. But I'm talking about the ages where slowly, slowly you think about Allah. You know, you become a little bit aware. And, but still, naturally, you think in your heart that, okay, even though I'm doing these things, I feel guilty. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here in this environment. So that's why all that culture is not acceptable to you. But also, at the same time, what you do 
might not be acceptable to them. Yes. You know, for example, uh, if you have a friend, he's, a, he's a, for example, a non-Muslim, and uh, you want to do something to talk about Allah, for example, you know, you want to talk something religious. Uh, and he might not be interested at all because he's an atheist, you know, he's not interested in you to talk about. So, khalas, that tomorrow he will not be your friend, you know. He said, oh, look at this guy, he's here. <laughs> this was another thing. When I, when, I, um, when I went to school, I was coming from this habit, uh, this background, like I used to listen to prophet stories and things like that, you know. Islamic so, uh, Islamic background. And then when I went to school, I used to sit around and start this uh, prophet story. I, I, I had this thing, mentality in my mind that I should be inviting people to Islam. Hello.